Hello, good day, welcome back. And today, we're gonna to be looking at how you name subjects in NAT. Um, there's a pattern um, to how you can name things, and there's some um, characters that you can use that have special meaning, and we're gonna look at that today. So, let's jump in. So when you think about a subject in that, what is it really? And so the best way to describe it is by copying. So I copy this bit of text from the NATS documentation and it says a subject is really at its simplest. A subject is just a string of characters that form a name which the publisher and subscriber can use to find each other. That's all it is. And that's how we've been seeing it used, right? You give the publisher a string and you say publish to this subject and you give the subscriber the same exact string and you say subscribe to this subject and that's it and they're able to exchange mess messages right now it says here it helps with scoping messages into streams on topics but we'll ignore that last part and just stick with this first part that is a way in which um, publishers and subscribers can sort of find each other okay so what about those names? How do you name them? Remember I hint said in the introduction that oh, there's certain characters that you can use and they have special meanings and so on. So here are the here's the recommendation from the NATS documentation that subject names should have the letters A through Z, you know, including zero and nine, the number zero and nine, and it can be upper or lowercase letters. And the names are case sensitive. Which means that if I call a subject um, intros with lowercase and all lowercase, and another subject intros with one character being uppercase, those are two different subjects. So case the subject names are case sensitive. And you cannot use any spaces in the subject name. That would look sort of weird. So those are the only thing you really need to remember at the most basic. So what about special characters? Well, you can use one of these three characters and there's a particular time to use them. So that, that character can be used as separating tokens within the subject name. And we'll see what those tokens are just now. You can use the greater than character and you can use the asterisks. Now, there are some reserved subject names and those begin with the dollar sign. So any subject that starts with dollar sign, that's considered reserved by the system. So you should not use dollar sign in a name. And of course, that goes to the recommendation above that says your subject name should really be the letters A through Z, lower or uppercase, and the uh, number zero through nine. So when you use a dot in a subject name, it creates what's called a subject hierarchy. So what does that really mean? So let's say um, you had some names like US that weather that US, weather that US that East, weather that US that East that New York, weather that US that East that Charlotte, and so on. Those dot within the subject name create like a hierarchy. And so the way you can visualize this is by actually putting it in a hierarchical chart. So at the top of that chart, you would have weather. And then under it, you would have US. And under US, of course, you have East and West. Because we have subject names with dot between weather and US, and then a dot between US and East and US and West. So therefore, those become like tokens. So each one of these is a token. So that's why we say the subject name contains tokens separated by the dot character. But the subject name is still whether that US is one subject name, whether that US that East is a different subject name, whether that US that East that New York is a completely different subject name. It's just that all these subject names are have tokens in them and you'll see how this can be exploited later on. And so we can continue and fill out our hierarchical chart like this. What it means is that you can essentially pick 
which one of these subjects you are if you look at these little um, boxes you can pick which one of those you want to publish to or subscribe to or a collection of them like I say we can exploit the fact that oh, we can create this hierarchy because no you can say I want all messages for all cities in the green or all Eastern regions, regardless of whether it's in the US or Guyana, that sort of thing. So let's see how this is done. And so this is done with wildcard characters. And so the first wildcard character is the star. And the star matches a single token. Now, for people who know Unix and regular expression, this is probably going to be the weirdest thing because star generally matches zero or more things. But here in that, star matches exactly one token. Again, one token. Remember what we said is that the dot was used to create tokens within your subject name. So the star can be used to match one token. So where would you use a star? From the subscriber's point of view. For the publisher, it must publish to a very specific subject. But for the subscriber, it can use wildcards now to say which set of subjects it wants to receive messages from. So let's say we have a NAT server and we have a publisher here that's publishing messages to weather.us.east. So that is the subject name, weather.us.east. Of course, we can see that there are three tokens here, but that doesn't matter. It is publishing to weather.us.east. We have a subscriber who's interested in messages from weather.us.east. And so that is what it's going to get. Again, very specific. Now, let's say we have a, another publisher, Publisher C, that's going to publish to weather.gui.east. Again, very specific. Using wildcard now, let's say we have a subscriber that says, I just want messages from any eastern region for the United States and Guyana. That's all I care about. Um, of course, if we had another subscriber that started publishing and whether that EU, that East or anything else there, of course, that star is going to match that too. But for now, we're only dealing with US and Guyana. So this second subscriber, subscriber D, would get messages from both of those. And so you see how concise and easy it is for subscriber D to say, hey, I just want messages from these two regions, whether it's in the US or Guyana, I don't really care. I just want messages for those two regions. So the star matches one and only one token. And in this case, we're using it to match the middle token. Okay, we're saying anything that matches weather, um, it must start with weather. I don't care what, what the next token is. And then it must end with east. That's it, only three tokens. I'll post the link to the documentation for that. So please read that if it, I don't make it clear enough for you. Okay, there is another wildcard token, which is the greater than um, symbol, okay? And this one matches one or more token. So why would you want to use something like this? Well, before we look at the example, there's a caveat here. You must, the wildcard code must appear at the end of the subject name, okay? And again, this is from the subscriber because the publishers must publish to a very specific subject. It doesn't matter if that subject name contains tokens, that's fine, but they're, they're publishing to a very specific subject. It's just that the subject name contains tokens. From the subscriber's point of view, they can now use these pattern matches using a star or asterisk for some people and the greater than symbol. Okay, so what does greater than mean? Okay, so let's say just as before, we had the two publishers, one publishing to US at East, the other publishing to GY that East. And we still have our two subscribers. Notice, however, subscriber D is now saying, I want to get messages from weather that US that star. And so it is going to get any message that is in the US that comes after that US. Okay. So it's going to be messages that are sent to US that east or whether they're sent to US that west. Of course, we don't have a publisher sending to US that west right now, but if they were, this subscriber D would get that. Let's look at subscriber E, this new subscriber. Subscriber E is saying, I want to know anything from where that starts with where, 
and I don't care who comes after it. So that's what the greater than symbol there means. It means one or more tokens. So it's going to match whether that US, whether that Guyana, whether that US that East, whether that Guyana that East, whether that US that West, <laughs> whether that US that, and keep all of them, anything for any number of tokens that comes after whether. So any other region or country you onboard into your system, subscriber E is going to be able to get those messages. So again, this is very, very powerful because you can essentially create a subscriber that is doing monitoring because it can say, okay, I want to know all the weather information regardless of where and what it, which region it's about. All right, so that's pretty much it. So now let's jump to the command line. And here on the left-hand side, you'll see that I've created some um, commands using the NAT CLI command that we learned about in the previous video to send messages to different topics. So we have our whether that US that East, cold message, whether that US that East at New York, very cold message, whether that US that East at Charlotte, chilly, whether that Guyana that East, warm, and then finally, whether that Guyana that East at Barbies, very warm. And so on the right, you can see that though we can subscribe to a very specific topic just as before like whether that you US that East. But we can also subscribe to all the East Coast cities by simply saying whether that US that East that star. And now we're getting both messages from New York and Charlotte. Now, the other thing we can do is to say that, oh, we just want messages from the Eastern regions regardless of which country it's in. So in this case, the only wildcard or the only token that's going to vary is the country. So we can say we want weather that star that east. And now we're going to get messages from both Guyana and the U.S. And so you can see for the U.S. east, it says cold. For Guyana east, it just says warm. Note, we're not getting messages from any of the cities because that's a yet another token after east. Now, our final example here will be using wildcard, um, the greater than symbol. And we can say we want all messages from the US. And so if we say whether that US that greater than, notice how we get in from all three topics. We get in US that East, we get in whether that US that East, we get in whether that US that East at New York, whether that US that East at Charlotte. And we can also combine wild cards. So we can use the star and the greater than. And we can say, I want all messages for any country. And so by using star for the country, which is going to replace US or Guyana in our case. And then after that, the greater than symbol says, for that country, give me all message regardless of how it's deep it's nested. And so we can get all the message essentially. We can get the same result by just simply saying whether that greater than. And so because the greater than symbol comes immediately after weather, and it just says, regardless of which country, just give me all the, the weather information and regardless of which city or whatever region, right? Because the greater than in this case mean one or more tokens that come after weather. So finally, if we put um, any other character after the greater than, that's an error. So in this example, let's put star after greater than and you can see that that CLI complains about it. And so the nice thing here is that because NATS allow us to use periods to create tokens within our subject names, then the subscriber can then use the wildcards, the star, to replace as a stand-in to match one token or the greater than to match one or more tokens. And now it can really get this great flexibility in terms of the set of messages a single subscription can return. For the publisher, it must publish to one and one, um, to a very specific subject. That doesn't mean that any one publisher can publish to more than one subject. That's not what it means. It just means that when it's sending a message, it must specify the subject name explicitly. For example, the publisher cannot use a wildcard when it's publishing 
only the subscriber can use this okay so that's it i think um, that's enough for this video not to make it too long um, if you have questions or issues please let me know the link to the documentation is below please check it out for yourself if you reach this far and you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing i would love to have you as a subscriber for those who have already subscribed thank you so much for sticking with the channel take care stay safe see you all next time bye